Hey everyone, today's video is on the surgical management of melanoma. So just like with any other type of operation we do for cancer, we have to make sure we really understand what a good workup entails so that we know we're doing the right operation for a given patient. So if you recall from our past videos, we like to break up the workup into labs, imaging, and then other studies. Now, this is a bit of a trick question because actually for melanoma, um, once you got your biopsy confirming your diagnosis, you actually don't really need any labs and you only get imaging if somebody's having specific symptoms that could be associated with a metastasis. For example, something like um, altered mental status or stroke symptoms that could be concerning for brain mets or uh, bone pain, but typically there's no imaging involved. And then there's not really any other studies either. So again, workup for melanoma, actually quite straightforward, pretty much just about the biopsy. One thing to consider is you do, of course, always do your history and physical for each patient. And uh, in this case, your physical exam, you really want to assess the nodal basins near the lesion itself. Um, this is typically in the axilla or the groin. And if you felt something in those, that would be considered a clinically positive um, node that would require a follow-up ultrasound and biopsy to see if there was any melanoma in that node. But as far as labs and imaging, nothing. Speaking of biopsy, there are two main types of biopsies. Um, that can be used to diagnose melanoma, a shave biopsy or a punch biopsy. If you imagine that this is your melanoma lesion within some amount of skin, a punch biopsy just takes a small punch and almost like a hole punch goes down and just takes out a full thickness punch or core of tissue uh, that goes from the top of the melanoma, usually pretty deep down into the subcutaneous tissue. Whereas a shave biopsy scrapes across the top and gets some amount of cells, usually for the entire lesion. Now, if you're on a surgery service and someone asks you what type of biopsy you want for melanoma, the answer is punch. And the reason is for surgeons, we really, really care about the depth of the melanoma. That is absolutely key. And a punch guarantees you're going to get a full thickness depth. However, if you're on a dermatology service, you'll probably answer shave. And their literature shows better results for shave biopsies because there can be some heterogeneity in this melanoma lesion. Um, for example, if you did your punch here, but there was a deeper layer here, you might get inaccurate staging. So they will typically shave and essentially do a really deep shave of the entire lesion, almost like a giant punch. And that will allow them to get um, good depth, even in uh, a lesion that might have a little bit of variability of depth. But again, if you're on a surgery service, someone, someone asks you generally say punch biopsy, although in reality, both when done well are totally acceptable. All right, so on to staging. We usually stage our patients before we do any sort of operation. So we're gonna focus a lot on the T staging. Um, this also is known as the Breslow depth of the tumor. Again, because this is so important for your surgical planning. So at the beginning, we have T1A, that's a tumor less than eight millimeters in depth or T1B, which is less than one millimeter in depth, or those T1A lesions less than eight millimeters, but with ulceration, those would become T1B. So any ulceration is at least T1B um, or something that's eight to one millimeter. That would also make something T1B as opposed to T1A, which is just a melanoma less than, uh, I've labeled these wrong. Um, it should be obviously 0.8 millimeter, not eight millimeters. Um, because of course one, two, you know, you wouldn't have T1A being eight millimeters deep. So sorry about that error. So that's 0 0.8 for these two numbers. T1A less than 0 0.8, T1B 0 0.8 to one um, or less than 0 0.8 with ulceration. Now you should see a similar pattern here for the rest of the lesions. So a T2A lesion is one to two millimeters in depth and T2B is just that same depth, but this time with ulceration added. T3A, two to four millimeters. T3B, same thing, but with ulceration. And then T4A, greater than four millimeters. T4B, greater than four millimeters with ulceration. So you can see from here that, again, it's really about the depth of the tumor, that's key, and then ulceration is also a key factor. And if I just remember the fewest numbers possible for T1, I'm thinking less than one millimeter. T2, one to two. T3, two to four. T4 greater than four, and then always remember that A is without ulceration and B is with ulceration. Again, a lot of detail, but this is very important because this is going to determine how wide your excision is and whether or not you get a sentinel lymph node biopsy, but we'll talk about that on a later slide. All right, and end staging, uh, this is less important for surgery, so we're gonna spend less time on it. N0, no nodes, N1, one, N2, two to three, and N3, 
greater than four or greater. Uh, and then of course, M as always, M0, no metastatic disease or M1, metastatic disease. Um, anyway, so on to surgical management. Whenever we think about surgical management of a tumor, we have to think about surgery and any sort of treatments that go around it. Those are of course, neoadjuvant for therapy like chemo radiation that happens before surgery or adjuvant. In this case, there's essentially no neoadjuvant therapy for melanoma except in clinical trials. So we're going to go straight to the surgical aspect. So what surgery do we do for melanoma? The typical surgery is a wide local excision or WLE. And then depending on the depth, like we talked about, you will do a wide local excision of that initial mass plus or minus a sentinel lymph node biopsy. And we're going to go into exactly what a sentinel lymph node biopsy is on a later slide. And who gets surgery? Is there anybody that doesn't? Uh, essentially, melanoma surgery is a primary modality of treatment. So almost everyone gets surgery except for metastatic disease or it's considered unresectable metastatic disease. All right, wide local excision. So if we have a melanoma here, we want to excise it with some sort of margin on each side. And that's just called a wide local excision. Of course, this is the skin. So you make an incision down through your skin, go down through the epidermis and dermis. So you have epidermis, dermis, and then below that you have your subcutaneous tissue. You take all of those and then below that there's always some sort of fascia and then usually a muscle layer. So a wide local excision goes through the skin all the way down to that usually muscular fascia and takes all of that tissue out. And it does it at a width um, determined by the depth of the tumor. So if you recall um, our different stages, um, so a T1 lesion is less than or equal to one millimeters deep. That lesion would get a one centimeter margin. Um, and then if we have a one to two millimeter deep lesion, that would get a one to two centimeter margin. And then any lesion greater than two millimeters deep gets a two centimeter margin. All right, so less than or equal to one, one centimeter, one to two millimeters leads to a one to two centimeter margin and greater than two, we kind of cap out at a maximum of a two centimeter margin for our wide local excision. The one last detail is how do you close these excisions? Obviously you can get these two centimeter margins on each side. This can be a pretty wide excision. So how do we close the skin afterwards? And the rule you want to think about there is called the three to one rule. So generally you pick um, which side. So if you're thinking right here, you want two centimeters, right? You could measure out two centimeters here, 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 and here, but you can't close this kind of circle or square of tissue. So generally you'll pick one that's going to be your smaller margin. Let's say it's this one. And let's say these two are maybe, this is a one centimeter lesion. So if we have two on each side, maybe this whole thing is five centimeters. And then you just multiply that by three to get the uh, length of your other incision. So I can't really draw it on here, but the idea is that you end up taking out a large oval around your melanoma. And that allows you to usually close the skin to itself quite nicely. So again, just pick where your smaller margin is going to go, measure out whatever length this is. Let's say that's your one margin. And you just multiply that by three. And that's the length of your other margin. That's going to allow you to close this nicely. All right, enough about wide local excisions. Now we'll talk a bit about sentinel lymph node biopsy. So first, who gets a sentinel lymph node biopsy? And that's any tumor deeper than 0.8 millimeters. I got the right numbers in there that time or with ulceration. So if you recall our staging systems, basically any tumor that's T1B or greater is going to get a sentinel lymph node biopsy. So how do we do this? Basically, you inject some sort of tracer, usually a radio tracer, um, and then you figure out where that tracer goes to which lymph node basin it goes to. And then you're going to go to that basin in the OR, make a small incision and attempt to find those sentinel lymph nodes which are defined as those lymph nodes where the drainage goes to first. 
The idea being, if you have a lesion and a lymph node, whatever, if you have a lesion that's going to go to the lymph node, whichever nodal basin it goes to, if it hits the first nodes and goes deeper, those first nodes must be positive. Um, but if it hits, if it, the first node is negative, then any node deeper than that node uh, must also be negative. And in that way, you can sample the lymph nodes in the lymph node basin without actually giving everyone a complete uh, lymph node dissection, which has a pretty high rate of complications, such as uh, primarily lymphedema, wound complications, etc. So back to a lymph node biopsy. You have a patient, they have a T1B or greater lesion. So they're going to come in usually either the day before or the morning of surgery and get a radio tracer, radio tracer usually technetium 99 injected. And then in the OR, you're going to inject some blue dye, usually either isosulfan or methylene blue, at the site of the lesion into the dermis. And then you're going to go to that uh, basin that was identified by the initial imaging of the radio tracer, make an incision, and you're going to stick your gamma probe in there to measure radioactivity. And you're going to find a radioactive lymph node and remove it. That's going to be your sentinel node. And then you use the radio probe to look around for any other radioactive nodes. And any node that's greater than 10% radioactivity of your hottest node gets removed. Also, any node that turns blue gets removed. And then finally, any clinically suspicious node gets removed. And what does that mean? That basically means any bulky, firm node that seems like there's cancer in it, you remove. And those nodes are often not hot or blue because the lymphatics are clogged by cancer at that point. So again, sentinel lymph node biopsy, they get radio tracer and blue dye. And then when you're in there in the OR, you take out any node that's hot defined by greater than 10% of the maximum um, reading of a hot node, any node that's blue or any clinically suspicious uh, bulky firm node. And then if you have a sentinel, uh, sentinel node that's positive, what do you do? You have two options. Um, it used to just be everybody got a complete nodal dissection. Um, usually an axillary dissection or a groin lymphadenectomy. Uh, but nowadays, as a result of the MSLT2 trial, you can actually observe these patients with serial ultrasounds and save them the morbidity of an axillary di or a, a completion dissection of whichever um, lymph node basin. So again, um, I'm not going to talk about these too much in this talk, but there are two major trials in melanoma, the MSLT trials. There's MSLT1 and there's MSLT2. Uh, the brief summary of them is MSLT1 confirmed that a sentinel lymph node biopsy was a good thing, that it improved the survival of patients uh, compared to only doing a wide local excision. And then MSLT2 was the trial that showed if you had a positive sentinel lymph node, you do not always have to do this complete nodal dissection. So again, if you're trying to prepare for any PIM questions on a surgery rotation that involves melanoma, you're definitely going to want to read into MSLT1 and 2. And of course, anyone with positive nodes is then going to go on to adjuvant therapy. So speaking of, what are our options for adjuvant therapy? We should first define who gets it. And I think the easiest way to think about it is anybody that has a positive lymph node is going to end up getting adjuvant therapy. Of course, there's clinical trials and there's options for observations, et cetera, based on, but those are all kind of more medical oncology topics. For surgeons, I think if you just know positive nodes are going to need adjuvant therapy, that's good enough. Uh, you have one major first line option, and that is your PD-1 inhibitors like nivolumab or premverlizumab. Um, also, every tumor gets tested for a BRAF mutation. Those with activating mutations can get BRAF inhibitors as well. All right, so a brief review. Remember, uh, for melanoma, this is cancer surgery, so you always need a good workup and staging to make sure you do the right operation. However, this is actually quite easy in melanoma. Basically, all you need is your biopsy, whether that's a punch or a shave, to then understand your depth. Remember that depth is critical for getting your T-stage, also known as the Breslau depth of your tumor. That's going to determine how wide your margins are for your wide local excision, as well as if you need or do not need a sentinel lymph node biopsy. And then finally, remember that there's not really neoadjuvant therapy in melanoma, at least not yet. Um, and surgery is a major mainstay of treatment. Um, and I think that's about it. So this video is for educational purposes only. Do not use to diagnose or treat any disease. We'll see you next time.